Welcome back to another Elden Ring guide. My name is Nilaus and we are going to cover Eastern Limgrave this time. And I think I might have called the last one, which was Western Limgrave, called that Eastern Limgrave by mistake. Uh, we are going to cover four different areas. We are heading our way from towards the first one, starting at the bridge, heading into Eastern Limgrave, and then jumping down into the elevator so we get a safe landing. And then we're going to head over to this location where there's actually a cave well hidden. Uh, the three caves will be High Road Cave, it will be Fort Haid, and it will be Summon Water Village, and it will be Mistwood Ruins. So if any of those are places you maybe haven't seen, then maybe this guide is for you, or maybe you have been there, but maybe you think you have missed something, or you just want some advice, uh, then this video is also for you. And if you like this kind of video, then be sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate all the feedback on the previous one. That was super nice. Uh, so let's dive in and see if uh, what we're going to do in here. This, uh, this one... If you have access to the lantern, it'll just be so much easier. But unfortunately, at this moment in time, I do not have the lantern. So I'm going to have to be stuck with switching back and forth between a torch. But the lantern is making it so much nicer. We start by dropping down and then we have some wolves coming up in this area. Uh, this is a rather lengthy dungeon. So try to conserve your healing as much as possible because well, you are probably going to need it. That's going to be one. So I'm praying pretty passively and trying my best not to take too much damage. He said as a wolf was just biting it at my legs. Sucks. We need to jump down in this pit to get further, but there are a few things to loot at this point. I am When I'm doing this, I'm doing my very best to take everything because sometimes there are some cool things hidden here and there, like you can see here. See, I did not see that this was a normal uh, a white wolf, so I, uh, yeah. I'm actually taking too much damage here, and again, it's um, getting a bit uh, dicey. So I decide instead of just swinging widely, let's uh, get the shield up even though that means we can't see anything so we are safe and you missed your chance but either way we are back and we're safe and still using a few too many of these flasks now they don't regenerate when you're inside these dungeons so try to conserve as much as possible so that you have it for the final boss of these mini dungeons that in very important cave moss is also something we must have and then jumping down to the next level of this you don't take any damage from this, so as long as you do from one to one, and not jump all the way down immediately. Now we're coming up on some wolves here. The whole thing is lo is uh, looped around. So here I am using the van using the bow, and I think this is a really good idea to use the bow uh, if you have one. Uh, I would recommend her getting one because you're going to save a lot of trouble instead of jumping down on top of these and you can actually just take care of this and even when we get to the next part it'll be so much easier as well. So we can jump down safely and move on in this area. Here there are there's a split and that split is uh, looping back together later on so when we take the upper path then we get a, the advantage of having a ledge to work on and also we get a little extra goodie I think yes there's a little goodie here so I didn't know but apparently the crossbow can't shoot straight down let's try again still can't shoot straight down so let's do something else ah, wolves that somehow jumped down and then we just have to deal with it like the rest of the wolves so I was, I'm sorry, sorry about it being so dark but that's why we were now switching back and forth here trying to have some some oil pots or some fire pots and that's working quite well the white one is white wolf is pretty good to take out because well just jumping down on top of that and there's one more unfortunately we can't still can't shoot down it hasn't changed since last time i tried hmm, surprise surprise and now we feel pretty confident jumping down but first another healing so we're down to three healing potions at this point it is a bit dicey but um it's it's gonna be fine don't worry switching over so we can protect ourselves when these come in i'm doing my very best to again mitigate the incoming damage by using the shield as much as possible and playing really really defensively and then we just take this one just to show that it loops back to this location this is where we drop down and then we had the two two different options uh, yep 
I think even I got it now. Yep, and then we had the one to the left, which we took, or the one straight ahead, which is now the one we are walking on. But they merge back here and then proceed further deeper into the dungeon. And then I thought they would have just actually go into a, <laughs> a into a boss arena, but it doesn't. It goes into a big open area, so there's more here. This is why you really need to make sure that you are conserving your your health potions as much as possible. Because there's there's quite a lot here. I'm again using the bow as much as possible here, just to make play it safe. Might be a bit slower, but let's uh, let's try to play it safe. Uh, except I forgot that there's a third one here. So. And let's have a fight at me a lot. Get the loot here. That's a smithing stone. Only a smithing stone one. So that also indicates that it's... It's the, still the same level of area that we have before. And be careful when you drop down. Don't want to drop all the way down. But you can just drop down here. And then there are two bats uh, that I know are coming. And unfortunately the way I do it is incorrect. I'm waiting for them to charge. But they don't. They uh, instead choose to be uh, grabbing instead. And so they go through my block. And again with another grab. Yeah, not great. Wait for it to come in. There it is. And then we can kill it. And again, now we're down to two health potions. That's not great. And not even a full mana uh, or full health path. It's not super great. And we still have more. And now also apparently some land octopus in here for unknown reasons. And here there are two behind the waterfall, so that's why I'm switching and we kill both of them at the same time. This is a dead end, but for once there's a treasure behind the waterfall. Thank you very much for that. It is, yeah, I've been disappointed so many times. So now we come into, back into the big room and we can drop down. This is a safe drop down, as long as you don't fall too far. If you go in the water, you die, because water is apparently really dangerous. I guess that makes sense. If you have armor on, you're probably not going to have a good time if you fall into the water. Here we have two, but there are two more. Uh, so be uh, aware that there will, you need to kill four in total at this location. So let's take these two instead of suddenly get crowded by four at the same time. So we got those two. Jumping down. Get the loot. And there's one here. We can take it before it goes up. Oh. Close. Yeah, let's switch to melee for the last one that's coming in. And there. So that was the four of these. You can jump. We are going to head towards that one you just saw. Um, and because then we can get all of the loot. But there's another way as well, but it's not as... Yeah. Then you don't get that big piece of loot. I can't remember what it is, but it's probably... Oh yeah, it's a PvP item, so in my opinion, not useful. Let's switch back and uh, move further in. Here we have a land octopus hanging in the ceiling. That's kind of uh, it's kind of the biggest thing we have to face here, and we are really struggling on our health potions. So we've got to be paying attention here. As you can see, there's there's just a lot of opportunities to make mistakes, and therefore use your your potions too early. And we have it now. I'm always taking these from the front so you can hit the beak and you can pretty easily get the knockdown and so you can get the critical hits. There's another opportunity for a critical hit. And that's taken care of that. Now we're almost there. A few random little baby land octopus. And I think that was the last before our boss fight and then we proceed out down this corridor and get to that loot we saw right before and that's a furl callers fingers things furl calling finger remedy Indeed. jump down here we can get over here without taking that side passage but uh, hey we want all the loot we can get i want to clear everything and finally we have this and we're down to two health potions and not a full uh, a full healing Luckily, this is not a difficult fight, so we are feel pretty confident about it. And we're just going to take some of these out, uh, just for whatever reason. And let's go. 
So this is a big golem and uh, with the same with the giant. If you can knock him down, then you get a massive, massive uh, visceral attack on a moment. Critical hit, so let's move on in. Switch to two-hander, flame weapons up, get the wolves in to distract and then just hit once, hit twice and three times and he falls down. So we've done like 30% damage. And if we then go in here and hit it right there, ha, and then you will see how much damage that does there. Another 50% damage. And if I somehow that's not connecting, but it doesn't matter. We connect and we kill. And we still main it, make it with a single flask of Crimson Tear available. So that was really uh, difficult. So let's move on to the next. Next one is uh, first we need to get a quest. And this is uh, located on, on top of this ruined bridge over. And we go in here and we Someone talk to this NPC to see what the quest is about. The great Kenneth Height. Ah, you've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's that's very kind, but um, no, no, the help is very much appreciated, even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me. Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave. Young Tarnished, I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it. A fool! And Lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to go to the wood? Fret not. The great fight is known for his sickle largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my... So it's time to us to try to take this one out. He's a bit uh, more difficult than the other ones we've seen because he both attacks with his weapon and when you then counter on his weapon, you're going to hit his head, which means he doesn't take any damage, like that one. Uh, so I'm kind of stumbling on how to do it correctly. And you can see those, those hurt a bit. Kind of annoying. Here is, again, another case where you really have to conserve your... You can see, that doesn't do anything. It's a nice counter attack, but it, uh, a guard counter, but it doesn't do much. Uh, so... Um, I think this one is just basically wait until you get an opening. Don't wait for chance attacks. Just get an opening and then work a, work a, work him down and then move on. Now at this point I am I'm down one crimson flask. So I'm thinking, you know, if I kill these two, maybe I'll get it. Well, actually, I'm down two flasks now. Maybe if I kill these two that are out here, I can recover. But it takes a bit more than that to recover, unfortunately. Yeah, so much for sneaking. And uh, we did not recover from this, but if we, as we continue, we are actually going to get a slight recovery. Normally inside a dungeon, you don't get recovery, but this, since this is not a dungeon, then I was actually thinking about, it. since we're down to three flasks already and we haven't even started on the building, then I am going to be a bit more careful. Uh, this is very much a trap. There are rats in there, and then there are two guys throwing flaming bombs at you with explosive barrels around you. It is, it is really nasty. So. We take this guy out, and then there's one more standing up there. So if you rush it, the, the guy below, then the one on the top will throw a, a grenade uh, right on top of all the barrels, and that's a bad time. So I prefer taking out like this, very simple, and then we can go in and take the rats. There are three rats, and I was just scanning to see if there are any more uh, on top of the barricades, but nope. So let's go in, and uh, let's immediately forget about the rats until they... Oh, here they are. And that's the two of the rats, and then there's one more rat. That's one level up. Get some blood rose. I'm still looking, scanning, but there are no more, so don't worry. Here's a rat. Come on, attack and counter. Great. So we can now go in, but I also want the smoldering butterflies. The smoldering butterflies is something you always run out of. So I'm switching here. There are a few things, a few guys in here, and we are going to 
take this guy out with a the ballista. Uh, in case you're wondering, this one, uh, this crossbow, I got this from the round table hold. Uh, you can unlock an area with a key, and then I got it, I think it's called Creepers uh, Crossbow. Did you see we got a recovery of one flask in this place, and we got another cookbook, so that's nice. And there's one more. So now we cleared out all of the ground level, there's nothing much in here, but we got a cookbook, we got recovery of a flask, and so that's, that's something. Let's move on up, and we are actually pretty healthy in terms of having, like, well, we have 70% health, but we have four flasks. That's pretty good. Uh, out here, we have the guy shooting the ballista to take care of those. You can, as I understand, you can kill the ballistas and then they don't respawn. But, you know, why would we even come back here? So it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think it's a really cool idea to sort of fight your way forward and then make it a bit easier. I take this side out with the uh, ranged so that it's much easier for me to get up here and get ready for this fight. This looks like a normal guard but he has a special attack and we get his special attack as an Ash of War. Super cool attack, but it's, um, I really don't want him to do it because it deals a lot of damage. So we're going to be completely overwhelming him also because this is the fight that we are, we need to work on. So there's no reason to save our, uh, our will for a better fight. So we just take this guy out. Now, ooh, you saw there, he was about to charge it up, but it's not there. This Bloody Slash, the, and I just want to mention two things about it. It is super cool it looks amazing it's like uh, well it's a bloody slash and um, and it deals a massive amount of damage but and this is really important it doesn't do any poise damage as far as i can tell i tried it and i can't get anyone to get knocked down with because of poise so you get more damage than in charge r2 but you get no poise and i think poise damage is so valuable in the game so i as much as i like the animation and the damage i just don't think it's worth it because it's it's missing the poise damage. Here we find a Dexus medallion left. It's something we're going to need much later, so no reason to worry about it. But it's nice to have it, so uh, we don't have to come back to this location at a later date. And now it's just uh, cleaning up the last, and then we need to go back to Kenneth and talk to him and tell him about our success here. Ah, I've been waiting for you with bated breath. Did you manage to recapture my fort? Oh, excellent news. Just wonderful. And the knight's dead to boot. Well done, my friend. Well done indeed. I knew I was right to trust you. Now, here's your reward, as promised. Go ahead. It's all yours. And we got a dagger. And it's onward to the next. Next is Summon Water village it is located at the top and it goes in there we're starting here because there's a person here who has a mission for us is the death has left its mark once again ah a tarnished are you i'm known as d i hunt down those who live in death and need their death the village here has been touched by death and worse yet it is home if you value your life, then go no further. Now, I would highly recommend staying on on your horse. It is so much easier because you can ride through him on the horse and whatever it is, on torrent. And just here, and then if you see the attack, just move out of the way. Easy. You don't look, if you look at it, I don't care about any of the skeletons because here, just move a bit further away. He'll kill all of the skeletons or he, she, it. The marina will the mariner will kill all of the them themselves. So here, summoning some more. Don't care. I'm just going in there, railing away. Nothing is, uh, not, no problems at all. And there's the loop. Pop with the, the bow. Doesn't do anything. And we just got a knockdown. Can't really abuse it. But uh, as this one is now, it's getting a bit dicey because the, the skeletons are here. But hey, you take care of your own skeletons. That's perfect. They don't even resummon when you do that. And then we can kill the mariner. Pretty easy. Just took a single hit here. Oh, there we go. We took a one hit. Uh, that this is incredibly easy if you stay on the horse. I tried it, and the moving away and you get easily overwhelmed with you're not on the horse. So I would recommend staying on the horse and uh, moving forward. Now we're not done with this area because there's a little sneaky uh, dungeon here, and it's, it doesn't have much. It's actually also guarded with a key, so you have to use a key for it. But I would say it's absolutely worth it. Here it is. Go down here. This turtle cave. 
Uh, so it is, has a fog wall and you use, use one of those stone sword keys. Very much worth it because you get a magnificent amulet that uh, increases stamina recovery and anything that recovers stamina. I don't know exactly how much it is, but hey, can you <laughs> giving me more stamina? Yes, please. You can kill the turtles if you feel so inclined. I don't. So I just want to go get here the turtle necklace. And that's the end of the summon water village quest line. We will go back and find him in round table hold to finish the quest. There is another quest, the Mistwood Ruins, and it's the last quest here. We can, as we get closer, we can hear a guy howling here in a very howling like a wolf, and that's kind of your indication that you're getting closer. So I'm gonna sneak my way in, and uh, unfortunately, get a bit lost as we sneak in because there's a giant sleeping bear, and we need to sneak up on that one. Uh, so let's uh, go there. Here we go, there is a guy up here, and we need to get him down so we can talk to him and fulfill a quest for him. But first we need to take care of the danger, and the danger in this location is the giant bear. Uh, this is the only thing that's here, so uh, as usual, we can uh, go all in with our summons and uh, flamers, flaming weapons. I always do the flaming weapons for all fights, because if you need to, you can always find grind some more fire grease, and the materials are pretty easy to get. Could maybe do a farming guide for those kind of things. It's super simple. And um, so, so any fight that looks at all problematic, just use fire grease. And especially against beasts, then bleed and fire is always good. Again, as I always do, charged R2s are absolutely amazing. You got a knockdown. We deal a massive amount of damage again, down to half. And then I can get another attack in. Just letting it. There's another attack. Attack. And that's the next one, and then we knock down, and we can just finish off the bear. Very simple. These bears are really dangerous until you figure out that they are movement pattern. They don't have a lot of attacks, and they are pretty, uh, pretty telegraphed. And then you can, and there's also the really big breaks where you can do the charge on two afterwards. So we go down here into the little dungeon. Why it is classified as a dungeon in my uh, all dungeons and mini bosses here, and. What do we get? We get an axe talisman. But that is not really all we need to do. We also need to get the guy down from from the tower now that we have the wolf taken care of. So let's uh, figure out, and this is weird because how do you know this? Um, you need to get him down somehow. So what we do is we go back to the Church of El. There we go. Go back to the Church of El. Or Ellie. I don't know. And talk to uh, Kali. Ah. It's always a pleasure. The howl of a wolf in the mistwood. I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself? Next time you hear the wolf's howl, make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. There is nothing to fear. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. Right, so let's head on back and try using that snap emote. Who goes there? Carly sent you, did he? Never the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. The name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrowell. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. As it so happens, we actually have already killed him uh, previously because he is in the Forlorn Hound Ever Jail. So we right. can just go there and get over There you are. Hard to work for it, but it's done. Don't say I'm not a man of my word. Here's your prize. And that's our reward. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to hit the like button. And of course, consider subscribing if you want more Elden Ring guides. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care and stay effective.